Here is weird shit that I do that my roommate has just had to like put up with. This first thing, I knew she was just gonna be like a real one from the start. When I was packing for New York, my mom kept being like, you have to bring this cross. Cause like, you know, my mother literally loves Jesus. But she was like, Liv, you have to bring this cross. I'm like, mom, no, like I'm not bringing the, I don't want the fucking cross. So I'm unboxing everything, unboxing. I'm unpacking everything in our common area with my roommate and I see the fucking cross. Mind you, it's not a little cross, it's a ginormous crystal cross. Also like, I did not know my roommate well before we moved in together. Like we had a lunch and everything like that but we were just like not we weren't friends yet and i'm like dude oh my god like i'm so sorry my mom packed this cross and like i don't know what i don't i can't throw it away she's like no you can't throw it away so we she's like you know what we'll just like leave it out so we've had a cross in our apartment for now going on our second year because my mother just insisted on me having a cross that I never fucking wanted. But in that moment, I was like, okay, she's a real one. And she thought it was like the funniest thing ever. I was like, I also sage our apartment probably three times a week. There is genuinely no reason for me to sage the apartment that much. But like, I'm just a woo-woo ass bitch. And I'm like, I'm cleansing the negative energy. So every time I do it, I send her a text. And I'm like, hey, like, do you want your room saged? It's literally like the fifth time this week. I'm like, you want your room saged? Like, what's up? She's always a good spirit. And she's always like, yeah, yeah, like, that's fine. But I, I quite literally sage our apartment so fucking much going off like my spiritual shit i also do like a little money manifestation in the beginning of the month i have to like leave a quarter outside and like the first of every month i'm like don't touch that fucking quarter and she's like okay like i literally won't touch the quarter because like you're not like allowed to touch the quarter or what she like never asks questions and i'll randomly be like we're gonna bring in a lot of money this month and she's like what and i'm just like nye, nye, nye. Even like yesterday, I was like, I just am feeling in my fucking titties that the crystals need to be in the shower. So like, let's put the crystals in the shower. And she's like, okay, that's fine. Mind you, like they're my fucking crystals. I'm like, we're putting them in the shower. And she's like, okay. She never questions my woo woo shit. And that's why I love her. I think I've even gotten her to be like a little bit of like woo woo. Cause she's always like, pray to the rocks for me, please. And I'm like, I got you, babe. Like I got you. Don't even get me started on the fucking plethora of men. Okay, not, not plethora. But like she firsthand witnesses all the dumb shit that I go through with men and like she gets to fucking meet these losers like the losers I tell you guys about she gets to meet them and it's always after I'm done talking to them that she's like yeah they were fucking losers I'm like dude you have to start telling me that during like you we need to talk about that when you first meet them like fucking loser alert like we need to do that because I feel like I would dodge a lot of the losers that I do date go to part two also like corporate girly like boss ass bitch has like an amazing job and i'm over here like i make tiktoks all day so she'll come home from like a stressful day at work wait this literally like happened last week i was playing like volleyball with <laughs> the little balloons that i had because i had balloons for when i celebrated a million with my best friends i just like have my earphones on like my noise canceling headphones it'll let me get don't get me started on though i'm just like dancing to SZA and like playing volleyball with this little fucking balloon and she just like walks in and i'm like hey like, how are you like a stressful day and i'm over there like I'm also like addicted to my noise canceling headphones. So like I love to wear them whenever she needs to talk to me. So she has to like walk up to me and like tap me. Every single time she does it, I go, oh my God, you scared me. She's like, literally it's only us in the fucking apartment. Like who else? is here Libby he does also have to listen to like my first hand rants like the rant the dumbest shit like if someone pisses me off in target like I come home and I'm like I could fuck it like the most obviously like what I do on here just like my most insane rant or the biggest one I'm like is it normal that I could be mad about this I'll come home and let's just say like my mom pissed me off or something I'm like is it normal to be like I just ask her about everything I'm like is it normal that I'm mad about this like I just need her justification to know if I'm being a dramatic ass bitch or not she always gives it to me too and she's always very honest whenever I get like a little OCD outburst well like not even outburst but like if she's going on a plane like I have to touch her elbow I don't know why it's my fucking OCD brain I'll be like come here let me touch your elbow before you go to Europe because I don't want anyone to die and she's like what I'm like mm, love you have fun in Europe I also have to deal with my mother because my mother for some reason will like and comment on every single one of my friends Instagram stories especially my roommate like she loves my roommate my mom loves my roommate's boyfriend even more so like if my roommate posts my boyfriend she's getting spammed from my fucking mother on Instagram like literally spam like my mom will call and if my roommates even near me and my mother knows that like she has to have a full conversation with my mother and then my mom has to ask about the boyfriend it's like a whole fucking ordeal every single time she was my first roommate like literally ever because I've lived alone for like the past five years she's like literally the best I don't think I could have asked for a better roommate because I was scared as fuck I was like what if I hate this bitch but that did not happen and I love her with my entire heart and soul and she gets to deal with my craziness every single day but literally I love that girl with my entire heart and soul 
Am I wrong for refusing to help my daughter with her car payment because she is a stripper? Hmm. I, 42 male, have a 22 year old daughter. She is in college and lives on campus. I agreed to help her make her car payments since she was in school. I was recently informed by a young man I work with that my daughter strips at a club about 40 minutes away. I confronted her on this and she said she didn't plan to do it after she graduated and just needed some money. I told her then to work at McDonald's, not use her body. Ugh. But I get your point, I do, I really do as a dad. But the amount of money you make at McDonald's versus the amount of money you make as a stripper is drastic. If school didn't cost an arm and a leg to survive, I'd be like, yeah, work at McDonald's. But life is expensive right now. It doesn't cost as much as it did when you were in school, which was like, what, $1,000 a semester? Shit is expensive. School is like five, six grand a semester minimum. And that's not including living expenses. We got into an argument and I asked her to quit stripping and get a decent job then. She refused and said stripping was easy money, so basically I said there was no need for me to pay her car payment anymore since she is making money so easily. She got upset and said that wasn't fair and that she doesn't make enough for that. I told her to figure it out. She told my wife about what happened and my wife was upset by her job choice but says it's unfair for me to stop supporting her so suddenly over an argument. I think it's perfectly fair, it's my money and my decision when to cut it off. <sighs> Ouch. Can we talk about the guy who snitched on him? Like, wait, that's so weird. I, if I ever saw a coworker's daughter, sister, mother, whatever at a strip club, I ain't telling him. That's none of my business. I think, honestly, that guy is the asshole out of everyone. If people say, no, I would want to know, that's not, this girl's a grown-ass girl. Am I in the wrong for trying to get a colleague to cheer up and smile? I, 60 female, am a supervisor working with three colleagues. I normally have four, but we were short staffed, so Mandy, 30 female, had to take on extra duties and had less breaks yesterday. We worked 11 hours yesterday, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., and stayed in accommodation provided by work. We had an early start today and signed on at 4 in the morning. Mandy was the last to show up, but to be fair, she was still on time and was obviously in a bad mood. She was quiet, didn't speak unless we asked her something, and kept to herself as we were getting ready to depart. I'm a very happy person, even in the morning, and it doesn't take much effort to be happy and smile. So it bothered me that she was so sullen. She said to another colleague that she was tired. I scoffed and said that she's young and has no reason to be tired. When pouring milk for her cereal, she stopped, put the carton out to thaw and said, it's frozen, with a blank look. I told her it wouldn't hurt her to smile while another colleague said, let it go, in the tune of song from Frozen. I thought it would be a nice idea to play this song and have us all sing along to it to try and bring her mood up. I played it, but she was on her phone and using the work app. So just as the chorus came on, I wrapped my arms around her from behind and started dancing and singing the song. She didn't seem very interested, so I upped the dancing and twisted and swayed. She suddenly exclaimed and said, my back and I thought that she was faking pain to get out of dancing, so I scoffed and said, oh, that's what everyone says, and kept dancing with her. That's when she snapped and yelled that she actually has a back injury, got out of my arms, and sat outside by herself. She never once mentioned that she had a back injury while working the day before, but apparently she injured it on the job in December and is still in physical therapy for it, and my dancing twisted it and hurt her. I said I was sorry for her back, but I was just trying to make her not be so mopey, because being around someone like that is no fun. She told me that she can't help being quiet in the morning because she isn't a morning person, and she was tired and now quite sore. To me, that's not an excuse, and I told her such. Now she's barely spoken to anyone unless it concerns work. Am I in the wrong for just wanting her to cheer up and have some fun? I'm with asshole for not wanting to cancel our honeymoon, despise what happened with my brother-in-law. My husband is 32 and I'm 24. We just got married three weeks ago and we're currently celebrating our honeymoon. The plan was to travel for two months to different countries in Europe, Asia, and Africa. We're currently in Spain and we are supposed to take a plane to Morocco in two days. However, my husband wants to cut the trip short and go back home now. My wife and daughter had a car crash and they're in the hospital. The kid is fine, but his wife has to be a little longer in the hospital and that's all we know. I told my husband that I understand he wants to support his brother but that he is not a doctor he can't really help i told him to call his brother as the best he can do is just send his best wishes to them i said our honeymoon is important because it's time for ourselves to enjoy and spend together he wasn't having any of it he called me selfish then kicked me out of our bedroom and he told me that he's leaving tomorrow because he needs to be supportive of his brother and told me i can continue the trip by myself but i said that's not the point of a honeymoon at all and i told him so he said if he would have known how bitchy i was he would never dated me am i the wrong i'm the asshole for talking to my friend's ex even though it's not technically her ex. So I just graduated and I've been going back and forth texting this guy who I thought was really attractive and he just so happens to be my friend's ex. For about a month we've been texting and we realized we have a lot in common so we clicked. But I feel really weird because he hooked up with my friend and sort of an acquaintance of mine at prom and it was sort of a thing with my other friend. They've gone back and forth many times over the years and she never really liked him but when senior year hit 
he changed a lot and got a lot fitter. She then now wanted to date him, and they did, but they were on and off literally every other week. He would flirt with me in school, and now that we're out, I don't know whether or not he's truly into me or if he just wanted to get with me. We are both really flirty with each other and hung out multiple times. He's also very protective of me and touchy whenever we're out. He texts me from the moment I wake up till 1 or even 4 o'clock in the morning. So I'm just wondering, am I in the wrong in this situation, even if they were never exactly official? Please comment your thoughts.